Hey, hi, hello, everyone. Claire Fluffle here, and... Oh, no. Not Curdy's Adventure already? Channel familiars know why this game being so low hurts, but if you're newer and thinking, wait, number 15 out of 39 is low, then you can become a channel familiar by liking the video and ringing that notification bell after subscribing. If you like what you see, you can even check out my Patreon, link in the description, for nifty perks, including two-day early access to all of my videos, including the Kirby soundtrack rankings. Special thanks to my head-patting level fan pup trends, Fiohazard, Furiol, Tyke Jane, and Miss K says, Happy birthday, Jason! I love you guys! As for why I love Kirby's Adventure, even though it's not a puptrin, yes, patrons are called puptrins, trust me, it's worth it, that's a long story. Well, well, kinda. See, me and Kirby's Adventure, we go way back. I was a very tiny puppy when I played it for the first time. Two years old, to be exact. In human years, don't worry, I'm not lamenting like an old lady about something I did when I was like 14 or something. Anyway, me playing it for the first time is my first memory, odd as that sounds, and the game itself is very, very important to me. Not because of that memory necessarily, but just because I love it tons. And I love the soundtrack tons. It's really, really good, and seeing it rank so low makes me super sad. But I guess we have to actually talk about why it ranks where it does, so let's start with a hot take. Typically, I don't like 8-bit music very much. There's a few reasons, and I should also note that when I say that, I'm usually referring to the NES. Game Boy music for me usually fares much better, with, ironically enough, Kirby being the exception. I can think of many Game Boy soundtracks that I like well enough, and there are games that came out years later as retro throwbacks and stuff, plus, you know, indies, that have solid 8-bit music. But the NES, for one reason or another, it just doesn't do it for me. So few NES soundtracks do, the many beloved tracks on the NES I just really can't get into. It's like the console itself, ha 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 ha. But Kirby's Adventure has always been a big exception to that rule, considering I adore basically everything about it. The visuals, the gameplay, and of course, the music. And to explain my point, let's use the first track in the game. <laughs> Not that one. Although, oh man, every time I listen to the title screen music, I just get all giddy. Such a great little jam this is. But once you actually select a file and start the game, you're immediately greeted with something special. bring up a nightmare in dreamland much since i don't like being negative too much but i get really bummed when i think about that game's vegetable valley it feels so lifeless especially compared to this that intro right away establishes how fun this soundtrack is going to be and extends wonderfully to the game itself while later games put more of a focus on the adventure is beginning with their opening tracks something i love Classic Kirby mostly puts the focus on the adventure is fun, which I love equally. I wouldn't say one is better than the other, but one certainly makes me want to get up and dance some more. And while, okay, yeah, Vegetable Valley, one of my favorite tracks in the entire game, it certainly isn't the only one that I would call fun. Even before the first boss fight, you get more tracks to keep that high energy going. Adventure also does this great thing where, in between levels, you can take some time to cool down in the world map. These tracks are especially soothing and work perfectly as little breathers before you jump into another level and allow the music to pump you up yet again. With 
the fun music, breathers in between, and large levels to explore and hum along to, this game really does feel like an adventure. You go to so many different places and see so many different things, come across unique enemies, puzzles, set pieces, abilities, the works. It feels lived in, and the music absolutely helps. You know I associate Vegetable Valley 4's music with the forest. Even beyond Vegetable Valley, though, you have things like Butter Building being the super tall building that you scale, shooting up on the Warp Star and running so fast you can literally see the buildings behind you spinning. Nor Grape Garden, which comes right after, being a level about being high in the sky, running through clouds and castle tops, and being super soothing as a companion piece. The music of adventure really complements that feeling, on top of being really great. tell from Grape Garden, not all of the music is super upbeat and cheery, it can be calm and serene as well. The best mix of these two styles, and my favorite track in the game, is Orange Ocean. We'll come back to this one later, but to get the most surface level compliment out of the way now, HOLY MOLY THIS IS SO GOOD JUST LISTEN TO IT! That's another one of my favorite things about this soundtrack. There's so much variety. Just between Vegetable Valley, that forest music, Butter Building, Grape Gardens, and Orange Ocean, there's so much variety. It's crazy. I, I realize I didn't play a sample of Butter Building earlier, so here, I have a butter sample. Did you like that sample of butter? Good, meet me too. Anyway, this doesn't even cover all of the musical styles that the game has to offer. Uh, the boss theme, which is randomly like a real bop. Now, granted, this isn't one of my favorite tracks in the game. It's not really one that I super care for, but that intro getting you pumped up before going ham with fun boss music, it's always a delight. Oddly enough though, I think I kind of prefer the mini boss music for Rainbow Resort 2. I don't know, it just feels kind of that there are higher stakes to this one, if that makes any sense. And uh, no, this is not the speedrunner in me subconsciously saying, Well, you use ball, so of course it's gotta be good! You only use ball in Nightmare, not Adventure, and I'm not a fan of that version. So, there. Yeah. Although, with that being said, yes, I do love ball. Stand ball! Speaking of not being a fan, of course, no soundtrack is perfect, and Adventure is no different. As much as I hate to say it, my big issue with this soundtrack, and I hate to say it, is that it's 8-bit and NES. Yeah, I love it overall, true, but it's just an impossible hill to climb for me. I, I don't know enough about music to really describe why I never resonate with NES music specifically, but even Kirby's Adventure doesn't fully escape. Granted, I still adore the soundtrack, and there's no competition. This is my favorite NES soundtrack ever. It's not even close. But I find myself preferring the simplicity of the Game Boy, or the finely <laughs> tuned, I'll be here all week, compositions of the Game Boy Color as 8-bit tracks compared to what the NES offers. Now, granted, if you're going to talk good about the NES, it's usually because of how much of a pioneer it was for, well, everything in gaming. Adventure is no different, being just as influential and important for the series as Dreamland, and the soundtrack is no different. One detail that I adore about Adventure is how the game tracks the time of day. Vegetable Valley takes place during the day and Rainbow Resort at night. The music absolutely reflects this, and for a game like Adventure, you still barely ever see this in any video game, or at the very least, 
told this way. I absolutely see Ice Cream Island taking place in the early afternoon, like, solely based on the music, for example. <laughs> If uh, you want my take here, based solely on the music, I would say Vegetable Valley is late in the morning when you're ready to start the day and go wild. Ice Cream Island, as I said, is early afternoon. Butter Building goes into the busy afternoon, while Grape Gardens is the calm after the storm. Yogurt Yard is late afternoon, Orange Ocean is the evening, I mean, you got that sky right there, but we're just talking about the music, still fits, and Rainbow Resort is at night. Rainbow Resort, in general, has such a dream-like sound to it. Like, come on, it's gotta be nighttime. And that's the last thing about this soundtrack that I adore that I'm going to mention today. See, classic Kirby and, uh, I don't know, post-classic Kirby differ in a lot of ways, but musically, the series made a huge departure even after just adventure. This game and Dreamland 1, to a very slightly lesser extent, sound to me like a dream. That's super abstract, I know, but to explain it as best as I can, I'll use Orange Ocean as an example, since that's my favorite track in the game. See, I told you we'd get back to this. You're sweeping it back over here now. with the fun intro and upbeat melody give it a very specific sense of joy to being at the ocean. Maybe it's because the music is paired with Orange Ocean, where you swim and board ships and run along an icy night, but it's always had an ethereal, dream-like feeling to it. Like anything can happen, but you can make sense of it, and the music complements that perfectly, and I feel the rest of Adventure does this as well. Is it the fact that the music is brilliant? Or simply the power of association? Maybe both? Doesn't matter to me. Either way, I proved my point and this soundtrack is amazing. With that though, I think that about covers it. Another game that I love dearly is out of the picture. For the record, this is one of my top 10 favorite games in the whole series, and we've now eliminated four of those top 10 favorite games in the whole series. Yay! We haven't even reached the top 10 yet. That's what makes this hurt. This ranking, it hurts. But for the sake of my artistic integrity and the hopes of getting some dollar bills, can't forget that, we press on. Let me know your predictions for future rankings in the comments. We're really getting close to the nitty gritty now, and I'd love to see how many correct guesses we have prior to the top 10. Speaking of, though, I've, uh, I've got more work to do, so I'm off to well, do more work. Until I see you wonderful people again, I've been Claire, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you around. Bye!